Hey there, Galaxy Groovers. This time, we're going to blow you a kiss in the wind. Welcome to Twitch Talk. Serena is elected entertainment chairman and determined to have singers of voice and heart perform her song at the Cosmos Cotillion. Tonight we're going to be discussing episode number 192 from season 6, Serena Stops the Show. This episode was written by Richard Baer, directed by Richard Michaels, and produced by William Asher. The executive producer is Harry Ackerman. The regular cast includes Elizabeth Montgomery as Samantha, Dick Sargent as Darren, and David White as Larry Tate. Guest stars include Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart as themselves, Art Matrano as Chick Cashman, and Pandora Spox, credited for the very first time as Serena. Also featured are Judy Strangis as Sandra, her real-life sister Cindy Malone as Leanne, and Jeff Burton as the doorman. Now I'll turn it over to David for a little bewitched history lesson. David? Production for Serena Stops the Show completed on December 18, 1969, with the original broadcast being on February 19, 1970. A repeat broadcast happened on August 27, 1970. The repeat broadcast was cut by 26 seconds for an additional promo, commercial, or PSA. Voice and Hire appeared on many Screen Gem series, including I Dream of Genie and The Flying Nun, but their appearance on Bewitched is most remembered because of Serena's performance of I'll Blow You a Kiss in the Wind. The song was released as a single in September 1969 on their own record label, B&H Aquarian Records. There seems to have been some confusion concerning the song's title, because two versions were released, I'll Blow You a Kiss in the Wind, which is actually not in the lyrics, and I'm Gonna Blow You a Kiss in the Wind, which is. The song was also released in Germany on Bell Records in 1969 as I'm Gonna Blow You a Kiss in the Wind. Also featured in Serena Stops the Show is the song I Wonder What She's Doing Tonight, which was released by A&M Records as a single on the album of the same name in December 1967, reaching number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1968. When hosting Saturday Night Live on December 11, 1995, director Quentin Tarantino declared Serena's performance of I'll Blow You a Kiss in the Wind to be the greatest moment in television history. <laughs> With that, I will not disagree. <laughs> now, Mike is waiting to discuss some continuity issues, so take it away, Mike. Thank you, David. Once again, I'm Adam Michael James. I love that Serena is so self-aware that in her sig alert warning on uh, Samantha and Darren's television, she says, Would you rather I handle this in my own way? <laughs> Sorry, sound more like Endora there. Work with me. But it's, it's nice that she's aware enough of herself and then gives Darren a chance to make good, which of course he screws up. But Serena did try, you gotta give her that. I love that Boyce and Hart are willing to make fun of themselves. Usually when you have musicians willing, um, you know, they're um, promoting themselves on a show, they're not willing to make fun of themselves. I love that Boyce and Hart are. Uh, when Serena uh, hands them the sheet music and the guys wonder what all the black marks are, and she's like, they're notes, don't you need notes? And then, I do, he doesn't. Love that. That is awesome. Um, it's interesting, though, after her spell, which um, is supposed to make Boyce and Hart failures instantly, it still takes Bree's shampoo several days before they canceled the special, which I found kind of odd. And I also find it kind of odd that Darren would have a verbal contract with Bree's shampoo 
Not only because I don't think you get verbal contracts in the advertising business, but because I can't imagine him um, making this deal without Larry, which apparently he did, and that's very, very strange. Maybe he still had a little bit of the ambition spell on him from the previous episode, uh, What Makes Darren Run. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is that um, after Serena has her clash, with uh, Chick Catchman, uh, the manager of Voice and Heart, and of course, Voice and Heart, um, she tells Samantha and Darren, they were rude to me. <laughs> no, they weren't. Voice and Heart wanted to take Serena to bed. It was only Chick Cashman who was rude to her. And then after she threatens all of them, um, they just let Serena walk in. You would think um, Chick Cashman would have arranged for security, but uh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Serena uh, walks in and wearing the uh, fur trim coat that uh, was the big point of Tension for Samantha and Darren in Cheap Cheap. So, <laughs> that's it for now. Back to you, Mark. Hey, thanks, Mike. Now we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be discussing episode number 192 Serena Stops the Show. See you in a minute. What's up, witches and warlocks? This is Adam Michael James, author of this magical manual that has always explored the continuity, witchcraft, and storylines of Bewitched. Well, it is my witchly duty to inform you that now there's also the Bewitched Continuum. In living color. <clears throat> anyway, check this out. The same geekgasmic study of each episode that was in the classic Bewitched Continuum, but the pictures! Look at that color! And this equally in-depth trip to the tab of the spin-off, and did I say spell guide? Finally got to put that in! It's a virtual rainbow of Bewitched Magic! The Bewitched Continuum in Living Color, now on Amazon. Don't watch Bewitched without it, because it's time you learned about witches. Welcome back to Twitch Talk, and we brought the panel in, and uh, this time we're going to be talking about uh, Bewitched episode number 192, Serena Stops the Show. And before we get started, does everyone have their delicious beverage? <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Alright, so we, um, we have David and Mike with us, so um, let's get started. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through... And each of you will talk a little bit about the episode, any uh, bloopers or just, you know, anything in general about the episode. Um, and then we're going to have you rate the episode from one to four stars. And uh, we'll go back at the end of the show and uh, we'll uh, do the overall rating for the episode. So um, let's start off with June. Well, I really love this episode. It's just so much fun. Um, but you know what? One thing about it is, I I thought, you know, well, well, there's a few a few things. Um, I keep forgetting that <laughs> Serena <laughs> is Elizabeth Montgomery. <laughs> It's really amazing when I watch this. I keep forgetting, and then I think, oh my god, she is so annoying. <laughs> I used to love her when I was younger, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, she is so annoying. <laughs> but um, I did think Darren was was really mean to her when he said that her song stunk. I was like, what a jerk! <laughs> I don't say that to anybody, but overall, this was a really fun episode, and I just loved it. And um, I'm definitely going to give it four stars. All right. Um. Justin, how about you? I like to nitpick Bewitched episodes. It's just what I do. <laughs> and in the scene towards the beginning of the episode with all the groupies trying to get in, there was a clipboard with authorized names in plain sight. The guards weren't checking IDs. Any one of the fans could have said, oh, I'm so-and-so, and they would have been let in. Also, when Serena zapped her name on the clipboard, she didn't zap her last name, just her first name. The guards didn't find that peculiar, they just <laughs> let her in. Um, another thing I noticed is that when Serena had voice and heart close their eyes and she zapped them into the Cosmos Cotillion, they didn't question it too much. They were like, oh well, we're in a new place now. <laughs> if I closed my eyes and then three seconds later I was in some location I didn't know where I was, 
I'd be freaking out. <laughs> I will say that Elizabeth Montgomery shined in this episode. Her singing was great, and it was really her singing, from what I understand. She was such a good actress that some viewers didn't even know that Sam and Serena were the same actress. Serena was credited as Pandora Spox, and I worked for her over the night. The studio got fan mail the dress to Pandora Spox. I don't know if that's true. I've always enjoyed the dynamics of Serena flirting with Larry. You know Larry. I mean, Serena was attractive and must have been 30 years younger. He must have been so interested in her and so tempted. As June mentioned, when Serena sang that song, Darren said it stank. But I thought it was pretty good. Throughout the series, Darren was rude to Samantha's relatives, except for Aunt Clara. You know, he made comments to Andorra like, Look who swooped in. If he were civil to them, and even more nice to them, maybe they wouldn't have done all those things to him. As far as Serena goes, I thought it was selfish of her to make Voice and Heart not popular. She didn't consider how it would affect them, their manager, or their staff members. She was only thinking of herself. I know this is a very popular episode. Um, I know I'm in the minority here. It's probably one of my least favorite episodes because I wasn't too crazy about the plot. <laughs> Elizabeth Montgomery shined. I think it was one of her best performances in the entire series. So because of Elizabeth Montgomery's performance alone, I'm going to give it two and a half stars. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Taylor. <laughs> I, I love the... Um... I, I actually love how technically well done the, some of the <clears throat> the effects are in this episode. I mean, really, we're still using split screen in 2021, and often it's not done well. The re most recent example that pops into my head is The Good Wife. Um, really, Elizabeth Montgomery does a good job with maintaining eye contact. I totally believe when they're in split screen and they're looking at each other that they're looking at each other. I also thought the record effect, where the record is spinning around, that's a super cool effect, and that seems like it would be hard to do, I mean, with strings not being visible. I mean, it's not just one. The whole thing has to be has to be three or four that make it go around. Um, you've heard me talk before on this show, and if you haven't, you can go back and watch old episodes that are on YouTube, um, of edits made to syndication. And so I thought, mm, I'm going to go and look to see if there's any big major edits. And I found out that in syndication, they cut Elizabeth's song by 51 seconds. They take out, like, three stanzas in Blow Me a Kiss in the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> they leave they leave a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be there, but they took that out. So I thought that was really interesting. I love this episode. I'm not the biggest fan of Serena, but I think it's a fun episode and it's hysterical to kind of let Liz do what she wants to do. So I give it a three and a half. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Anna. Okay, I am with Taylor. The spinning record is one of my favorite things things it's just it's just charming um i love serena's flirtatiousness with larry when she says cotton top i crack up and it feels like this is kind of the samantha that larry would like to see all the time and so what's fun to me about serena is that Samantha is usually kind of hiding something. She's always hiding being a witch beneath being the suburban housewife. And so Serena is the side of her with nothing concealed, nothing secretive or held back about, about Serena. Um, everything is on the surface. She's kind of the best of both, of both worlds. I love the guest list scene because that is just so universal. Like, I'm on the guest list. And, you know, it made me think about, you know, the whole concept of like, okay, Serena had the attitude of being on the guest list. She probably could have gotten in even without it. And I love the scenes of Serena and Samantha dancing together. It, it's like Samantha for once kind of like puts aside trying to keep 
peace with everybody and just enjoys her cousin, which she do also does with Uncle Arthur. So I think there's really a part of her that kind of would have liked to stay out and party with her husband, but she's got to get home to Darren and Tapitha. So it's a fun episode. I like I like the music. It doesn't have just the bewitched, amazing charm to me. So I'm going to give it a two and a half. Okay, and how about uh, Robert? So uh, hey, I, I right off the bat, I give this um, three and a half stars. I think it's like the top Serena um, episode. Uh, I agree with uh, Taylor about the split screen. I think it's done very, very uh, well. There is um, a few seconds in the dining room where you can see uh, Samantha's double. You can see her face. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I think the episode's pretty flawless. Of, of voice and heart, they're kind of, you know, a, a second rate kind of Everly Brothers. <laughs> But I do remember um, watching the show in the 70s and actually calling into a radio station and requesting the song. And they're like, who? What? And I said, it was just on TV. I, I also agree with everyone that uh, I thought Darren was very, very nasty when he said the song stunk. Uh, it's it's fantastic. So, OK, how about you, David? Well, this is one of my very favorite episodes. Um, I remember it from when I was really little, and I was absolutely shocked and pleased to learn that Boyce and Hart was a real group. So much so that when I found out that they were a real group, I ordered the um, Best of Boyce and Hart CD compilation, and it was amazing because I love that song, I Wonder What She's Doing Tonight, that they play when they show the girls outside of the um, venue. And I love Blow You a Kiss in the Wind. I was so excited that that was on there. And the record, I agree, was one of the best special effects. I always imagined that they were holding a record player upside down up in the rafters with the strings <laughs> tied to the record to get it to go around. And I love Serena's spells. I love both of them, uh, especially Back from the Cosmos to Your Planet. Love it, love it, love it. And then I think Samantha's dancing is cheesy. <laughs> I love that she's, she's almost like a nerd compared to cool Serena. I noticed that they use the same crowd scene from Long Live the Queen when they're at the Cosmos Cotillion. And then I was, I had tried to make a background of just the stage with the clouds with the uh, lights in it for the Zoom, but it wouldn't work on here. But it's so very basic, but yet when we remember it, it's like it's out in the cosmos somewhere and it's all cloudy and beautiful when really it's just a stand with lights and uh, stuffing all over it. So I like that our little show got us to believe in things that were totally out of this world with the most basic, basic stuff. I give it four stars, four stars. Okay, how about you, Mike? Well, of course, uh, Continuity Meister has to add uh, some more continuity as if we didn't have enough at the beginning. Um, on the plus side, I love that this episode really builds on Hippie Hippie Hooray um, in that Serena is still doing her music, even though um, it was Samantha that did the If and Song and not Serena, let's not forget that. It was also Samantha who first referred to Larry as Cotton Top in um, Hippie Hippie Hooray and not Serena. So um, I'm not sure where Serena got it from. Maybe she was eavesdropping on that uh, on that little conversation. And um, it was interesting that um, Larry was still against hippies, um, like he was in Hippie Hippie Hooray. But it's interesting too that he recognizes Serena because he only ever met her as a blonde in Hippie Hippie Hooray. So enough about that episode. Um, the other, only other thing I want to mention is um, issues of timing in uh, this episode. Um, the Boyce and Hart song at the Cosmos Cotillion was about one minute, and then people <laughs> applauded for one minute. <laughs> um, and also it was uh, kind of wild that Serena was 
um, you know, made entertainment chairman. And she brings in one act to sing one minute of one song and then pops them out. So I guess she didn't get hired back to do that job uh, the following year. And for the final bit of timing continuity, I have to refer to the big book. I'm just gonna read it out of here because it's simple. Um, there are several continuity flaws in this episode with regard to time. After Serena sings her song, Samantha offers her a midnight snack. A moment later, when Serena pops back to Boyce and Hart's venue to assure their failure, it's still daytime. And not long after her first visit, because the same fans are camped out there. When Serena meets Boyce and Hart, she says her cotillion is a week from Saturday night. She casts her spell <laughs> soon after that. Um, but the next scene shows Larry reporting that the duo hasn't sold a record in three days. The same amount of time Samantha has been trying to reach Serena. It's the night of the dance at this point because Samantha pops there in the same clothes she wears during Larry's visit. But it can't be Saturday because Larry brandishes today's issue of Weekly Variety, which doesn't publish on weekends, um, nor would a weekly publication put out daily editions. And it can't have only been three days since Serena cast her spell because the dance was still over a week away when she did it. Uh, the only way this works is if Boyce and Hart stopped selling records over four days into Serena's spell, but that doesn't jive with the fans turning off from their idols instantly. So as long as they don't pay attention to that, <laughs> I give this episode three stars because it is really a lot of fun. Okay, well, um, I guess it's my turn, and I have to start off by saying that this is my absolute favorite episode of the series. It's just, I've always loved it. It's just, it's fun. I think Elizabeth just looks like she's having a ball, especially as Serena. This is actually the first episode where Pandora Fox was credited as playing Serena, and um, I think that... That's the reason why um, everybody thought that it was two different people playing, you know, Elizabeth playing Samantha and somebody else playing Serena, two different actresses because um, of the credit. And this is actually something that Elizabeth came up with and it's a play on Pandora's box. Pandora's <laughs> box. So um, that was pretty pretty creative on her part. Uh, we, we mentioned uh, the past list and um, there's a blooper in there, because if you notice, when Serena zaps her name onto the pass list in the close-up, and then they cut back to the wide shot, the name is not there on the list when they let her in the door. So um, uh, look for that. And uh, finally, um, the names on the pass list, those were actually all Screen Gems executives at the time. Um, one of which who is Leonard Goldberg, who went on to uh, partner up with uh, Aaron Spelling. Um, and they produced a lot of shows back in the, uh, the late 70s, early 80s. Um, so again, my favorite episode, and I have to give this four stars. Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we will uh, do a recap and uh, find out the overall rating for episode number 192, Serena Stops the Show. We'll be right back. There's a great contrast in the fashion in this um in this episode serena is always dressed amazingly and so when she pops in in the beginning samantha is wearing an extremely drab outfit and midway through their colors are sort of reversed and then at the very end Samantha kind of blends into that orange background of the Cosmos Cotillion. Y'all bored at home? You got nothing to do to be rich? History book will come to your rescue. We 
With over 700 pages of info and fun, you won't want to put it down until the day is done. Huh. If you're a True Bewitch fan, then all we can say is get online and order yours today. Tommy Boyce and I were signed to Screen Gems Columbia Music and uh, part of our deal when we re-signed was that they would develop our own sitcom. So in preparation for that, uh, Screen Gems put us on all of the existing sitcoms that they had. And uh, and so we did The Flying Nun and uh, I Dream of Jeannie. And um, when we got to Bewitched, uh, actually it turned out to be uh, my favorite of all the appearances that we did. Yeah, Elizabeth Montgomery was great to work with. Uh, she was a little standoffish uh, at times, but I, I came to think later on at the end of the personal appearance that we did uh, that she was in character. She's staying in character of her wicked cousin. I came in to work there at, at the studio and um, and she, Elizabeth, was still getting her makeup on, and uh, she said, I haven't had my coffee yet, or something like that. And uh, she was a little uh, apologetic for not having her makeup on, basically, and uh, <laughs> looking different than uh, me and everybody else was used to seeing her. And so I tried to put her at ease on that, you know, you take your time, everything's fine. And then uh, when we started uh, recording, uh, it went very smoothly. Uh, I loved the, the script of it, uh, which made made it fun for everybody. Uh, everybody was nice to us, of course, we were the green uh, uh, actors that didn't have a lot of experience in that uh, field yet. Quinn Tarantino somewhere uh, is on record of saying that this, that the Voice and Heart episode of Bewitched was the greatest show in the history of television, something to that uh, effect. And uh, he he fell in love with the song that, uh, that we had written uh, for uh, for the, uh, the the wicked cousin to sing, and we also sang it in the end together. Uh, he loved that song, uh, "Blow You a Kiss in the Wind." It was a great scene, and I think it's my favorite scene in that episode. Is when all of the, this big group of fans were standing outside uh, um, uh, with big placards saying "We love Boyce and Heart" and trying to get close to us and so on. And then all of a sudden, when the spell was cast, <laughs> they threw them all on the ground and stomped on them. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, it's just funny to me. So everybody was kind to us, and uh, it was a good, a good experience. All right, welcome back, and uh, now we're going to do our recap. Um, I'm going to go through and we just remind everybody of what the rating was that each, you know, each panel member gave on the episode, and then we will uh, calculate it out and see what the uh, overall rating is for Serena Stops the Show. So, uh, June gave it four stars. Justin gave it two and a half stars. <laughs> Taylor, three and a half stars. Anna, two and a half stars. Robert, three and a half stars. Mike, three stars. David, four stars. And I gave it four stars. So, when we average it out, the overall rating for episode number 192, Serena Stops the Show, is... <laughs> 3.375. So we will round that up to 3.5 stars. Three and a half stars for Serena Stops the Show. A love potion sends Endora to the altar as we discuss Bewitched episode number 125, Once in a Vial. Next time on Twitch Talk. Yay! Yay! All right. Well, I want to thank uh, everyone for joining us. Um, my co-host David Pierce and Adam Michael James, June, Justin, <laughs> Taylor, Anna, and Robert. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you next time. And 
best Twitches ever. Yeah. 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 Yeah.